Hello, and welcome back, Commander Cytanium, at your service. Today, on Space Ember, we are looking, for the first time, at a game called Breathage. Sorry, what? We... Wait, I already talked about this on the... I already did an episode on this on Cytanium Mine two years ago. Really? Has the show been around so long I don't even remember what games I've talked about? Oh no! <laughs> oh no! Wait, wait, hold on. I'll be right back. I'm gonna go listen to what I said the first time. Okay, great job, Citanium, from the past. All good points. We'll definitely use that in this video. Anyway, you know what? We're gonna talk about Breathage again. Because... As I have mentioned once or twice, I am planning on doing second chances of games in this coming year. And so, Breathage is actually one of those. I played it a few years back, and I am now playing it again, since uh, EXP Limited was doing it at the same time for the other show. And, uh, you know what? We have some stuff to talk about with it. But first, of course, we have to do the checklist for Breathage. Microgravity! Oh yeah, that's like, basically the whole game. Oxygen meter, yes, it's constantly present anytime you are in space. Aliens, um, not really ones that you interact with so much, uh, al I, I, I don't think aliens in the way people think. You come across some, like, biological science experiments? But that's not exactly... Aliens, right? I'm gonna say no. Lasers. You get a laser pistol on this. So that counts. Yes. Robots. Uh, yeah, actually, I think the only real enemies that you fight in the game are robots. So, yes, they, they are definitely there. Turrets and little guard bots. All sorts of fun robots. Spaceships. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, you were on a spaceship at the very beginning, not one that you piloted or anything. Uh, but there is also the, uh, the vacuum cleaner thing that you get on, the little, the little ship that you control through the, uh, through the landscape. And also, you, um, can start to build crafts, although it's more for bases, not, not spacecrafts. But yeah, yeah, no, you get to pilot a spaceship, it's just like, it's it's a motorbike version of the spaceship. Still counts. Weird food. You make food packets out of something called nutritious goo. Check. So what is this breathage that we speak of? Well, the story is basically that you are playing this unnamed character that is trying to bury his grandfather... Uh, because he's working for Breathage Funeral Services. It, it, basically, there's this giant ship, and it's carrying a bunch of corpses on it. And now, you are on there as well. But your uh, ship ends up having this massive rupture. The whole thing breaks apart, and you watch as your grandfather's corpse gets, you know, just jettisoned out into the void. And there you are, with your pet immortal chicken. You heard me right. Don't, don't question the immortal chicken. Point is, your task is pretty clear at this point. You have to go out into that void and figure out what happened, and find your grandfather's corpse so you can go and bury him. Uh, but that's not really where the game starts. The game starts with this sort of epic cutscene or at least a very tongue-in-cheek version of it, where you are being brought before these robots that want you to tell them the entire story of what happened to the ship. A little bit of foreshadowing. For those of you who actually finished the game, good for you if you did. We'll get into the reasons why in a minute. So the general way that this game is framed is that you have to go out into space and watch your oxygen meters, but collect a bunch of resources so that you can build certain things. Tools, upgrades, etc. And it asks you to explore the vast 
nothingness of space. Except that in Breathage, it's not really a vast nothingness. It's actually a space that is filled with all of these little components. And they all sort of have their own biomes of sorts. There's one where all of, like, the paint had uh, exploded, so that's sort of an area all of its own. There's this kind of, like, cryo-liquid area where the coolant tanks were, so that's an area all to its own. Uh, there are certain shuttle sections that you get into where you can tell that they were transporting certain science experiments and working on things on this giant ship that you were on. It kind of has its own biomes, but it's all set in this open microgravity environment of space where you have to manage your oxygen meters. And because they are set far enough apart, you have to be aware of where you are actually headed. Uh, I can't, on a tank of oxygen, realistically go through the cryogenic area path at the same time that I can go through the uh, the paint area, which is on the other side, but I probably need to visit both of these to get resources that I need to craft something so I can get further down the uh, the game world. When I was first introduced to Breathage in 2021, it was selling itself as Subnautica in Space. I'm sure it would love to be Subnautica in Space. It is not that, mostly because of the void that space presents. Subnautica was really interesting because it's a survival game, and yeah, you have to watch your oxygen meters and everything, but it is teeming with life. It's it's just full of life in every direction that you go. Breathage doesn't really have that ability because it is a space game. So you are going out into this void, and in order to really experience space, you kind of have to have these vast expanses that are very difficult to traverse that you can't really get to easily. You can only move very slowly in this environment. Eventually, though, you do get yourself the little aforementioned, like, motorbike, the vacuum cleaner, and you can move around a lot faster once that happens. But I have a feeling that a lot of people might have pieced out on the game before that for the fact that it does come off as a bit tedious from the very beginning. Uh, there is a thing that they decided to do in this game where they want it to be humorous. And by humorous, I mean they really want to wink to the camera and say, aren't we so random? One of the first tasks that you are given by the game is to collect some resources to create crap imposed by the developers. It, it's just, it's called that. And it serves no purpose except to say, hey, you collected these resources and made this stupid thing that doesn't serve any purpose. Aren't we random? And it's like, yeah, uh, okay, I guess that happened. Great. Also, the immortal chicken, uh, which you try to use to plug up holes occasionally, it's just, it, it, it serves its purpose when it needs to, but mostly for story beats. You don't really have access to the chicken for anything except specific areas where you need to do it for a gag. Otherwise, the chicken is kind of pointless. So, they do these things mostly to wink to the camera and say, Hey, isn't this funny? Is, isn't, that, isn't that a snarky thing that we did? Eh? Eh? And you're like, yeah, okay, let's just move on. Let's just move on. You'll uncover stuff in the vastness of space. And, and to be fair, it has this atmosphere when you get into the space itself where it's got these like low tones to it for the musical score and it just spans on forever and has a real atmosphere to it. Almost a calming one like the calm before the storm. And then you'll happen upon this, like, one little habitable area, this this one little scene of something that was happening on the ship that is torn apart. And all of a sudden, the computer will come on and talk a mile a minute at you about something in the the most, like, 
purposefully witty way imaginable. The presence of such an amount of cooling gel is strange. Such a composition was outdated more than 10 years ago and is not produced on any planet. And just completely tonally shift the game. It's like, oh, you're going through space. It's all nice and quiet. The developers were like, and then and then we handcuffed everybody and everybody died. Ha ha! And then they they like they they jet out. Judging by the degree of decomposition, this subject died long before the catastrophe. We have a murder here, Sherlock, and we just have to ignore it. And and then you're back to the space. It breaks up any kind of tonal consistency to the game, and it's just weird. It's just a weird choice that they decided to make in the game. I think one of the bigger problems though, that Breathage has is inventory management. For some reason, what they decided to do in this game, I still don't understand this, is every thing you pick up takes a space in your inventory. So, like, let's imagine that you go saying, oh, I need metal. Sure, okay, you need scraps of metal in order to build stuff. Of course you're going to for most of your tools. So you go off to find scrap metal, but every single one of these little scrap metal pieces takes up one space in your inventory. So if I collect ten, it goes one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Ten spaces in your inventory are denoted to little pieces of scrap. Your inventory can fill up very quickly. It's not that they don't give you a large inventory at the start, it doesn't really get upgraded. You can create storage devices, etc., that you could move around. But in general, your space starts okay sized, but never increases. At the beginning, you might have a couple tools and a couple pieces of equipment, a couple health items on you, and then you collect a bunch of scraps. So you don't notice the problem with the inventory management at that point. But it doesn't take long before the game mechanics require you to build more and more tools, which also take up spaces in your inventory, and also to, in order to get further and further out, create, like, oxygen candles so you can refill your oxygen in zero-G so that you can uh, repair your, your health or hydrate in the field because it's a survival game. You have health, but also, you know, hunger and thirst meters, etc. And so it doesn't take long for half your inventory space to be just utilized by stuff you need to keep with you as like backpack items and so the rest of it can be used for collecting stuff but then you can't collect that much stuff and then you have to backtrack anyway in order to bring everything back with you to some kind of a base camp also your inventories between the safe spaces that you're able to go to the the, the first habitable area and then the, like the second habitable ship uh, they don't transfer between them. So if you want to keep moving further out and keep all of the resources that you've accumulated, you then have to start thinking about how I can take all of this stuff that I got and move it from the first area and then travel with it all the way to this next area. It's mostly a user interface and quality of life issue, but it is an issue. To be fair, having played Breathage a second time and getting much further in the game than I did the first time, there are some systems that I wasn't aware of when I first came in. Like, for instance, you do get the ability to start building, like, outposts. And this is good and bad. On the good side, I could build these outposts in places where I normally don't have, like, a base of operations, right? I, I could build it with a, an oxygen station and a power station and stuff. It's all kinds of interior stuff that you can do with these spaces. You can even build them with bays for your little vacuum hot rod. You can build a, a bunch of things on these. However, remember those resources that you need in order to build things? You need them on you to build these items. So wherever you're going to build them, you have to take all of your inventory with you to that space. And again, you have limited inventory space, so you're going to have to make a lot of treks 
to and from the area that you actually want to build this thing in order to take all the resources that you need with you. So, again, we have run into this place where it becomes so much more about inventory management. Stacks of basic items, like a glue or a lead or a paint, anything like that. Ice, why, why will one ice cube not stack up to like nine or something? Would have solved a lot of this, but also trying to consolidate the amount of tools that you need on you because they start to get into this pattern where they need to have different tools to do different things. I have a little grabber arm. Well, what's the grabber arm do? Well, it's mostly there so that I can get polymers or I can collect glass without hurting myself. Okay, that's it. Okay, well, what about if you wanted to um, get, uh, like, gases or something from the, the asteroids? Oh, well, we don't need a picker for that. What you need instead of the little grabber arm is I need a drill. Okay, so some some things I need to pick up, I need the drill. Some things I need the grabber. Some things I need the, the thwack'em stick that they give you. Okay, so I need to keep all of those on me, and they take up inventory space as well. How do you get around the turrets and stuff? Well, you're going to have to shoot them with your pew-pew laser. Okay, so I've got a pew-pew laser on me. But that's not going to handle all of the enemies. Sometimes I might need an explosive. Okay, well, they, you need to craft explosives, and they have to stay in your inventory, and every explosive that I have is one inventory space. Or two, in some cases. So now, those are taking up room, and it really just becomes a logistics issue at a certain point. EXP Limited had said that the point where he pieced out was where the game gives you this task to open 200 caskets. And for the record, yes, you do need a different tool in order to open the caskets than the ones I've mentioned. But I knew that that was a fake out. And I think even he knew it was a fake out. Uh, that, that That's not actually going to happen. But I guess the fact that the game even asks you to is probably the point where people go, Oh, this is just a grind fest, because it's already started to feel that way. The things that Breathage does right, though, is the sense of moving in space is really good. I liked that a lot. The look of the game is actually very nice. It's a little cartoonish, but not so much that it takes you out of the experience, or, or takes you out of the idea of actually being in space itself. The oxygen meter... When it starts to count down and the music gets more intense and everything to explain to you that you're running out of oxygen, that atmospheric music goes away and it starts to just kind of like get really deep and do 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 And builds an intensity is like you need oxygen, you need oxygen. When any of uh, these these problems arise in the survival mechanics, it's very good. And they give really good music cues for that. I think overall, it is the kind of space game that you're really not going to experience with most of the things that I'd be talking about during Space Emmer. It's, um, it's a different animal altogether, but it's also not really like other survival games that it might want to be like. It does not have the consistency or the vibrance of a Subnautica. But it is also not necessarily taking itself as seriously as more epic games that want to be important. You can kind of tell from the very beginning that they're doing a very tongue-in-cheek sort of game here. And that can work. That can work. But if you're going to do a tongue-in-cheek game then trying to create atmospheric sections and tension is just totally opposite the experience of what that tongue-in-cheek humor does. And, and I think that that's really where it suffers. It suffers from a tonal inconsistency. And then, obviously, some of the logistic problems, like with inventory management and trying to figure out how to get the resources that you need in order to build new stuff, and how much stuff you need to build in order to do anything in the game. That's really where it suffers, and it's unfortunate. I think that it had good bones to it, a good idea behind it. Ultimately, though, even after playing it a second time, 
I mean, I played it longer, and I I think I enjoyed it a little bit more, knowing what I was getting into. I realized that it was going to become more of a grind fest, even if it was poking fun at that, at the start, that it was going to become more of a grind once I got into chapters like 4 and 5 and 6. Uh that there was just laundry lists of, okay, well, you need to lower the radiation. Well, there's six things that you need to do to lower the radiation, and each one of those is in a different section of this part of the map, and they're all going to be different quests that you have to do. So now there's just six different pieces of busy work that I have to go through, and I have to go through a military station, and I have to go through the bio lab, and I have to do all these things. And then, if you get to the later sections... Uh, I I looked it up because I wanted to see what I was in for. They're like, oh yeah, now there here's like ten things that you have to do, and it's like, no, I'm just not going to do that. I don't care enough about it in order to do that thing. Uh, I built some of the station, but my station was parked directly outside of a a, a safe hub that I already had, so. That kind of becomes fruitless, isn't it? Because I, I didn't want to transfer all of my resources out into the middle of nowhere. Several times. And move all of my equipment there. Uh, a really interesting idea. But the pacing of it. And the tone of it. And the mechanics of it. Really hold it back from greatness. Looks like someone tried to get inside the module using the shuttle as a battering ram. By the way, did you know that originally the heads of some battering rams were carved in the shape of a ram? That's an interesting fact. The chance of injuring yourself with the electrical tape is 46%, which makes the dispenser the safest tool for useless construction and wasting your time. Remember not to put the loose end of the electrical tape down your throat. The pilot entered the module. Well, partly. At any rate, his brains are scattered all over the corridor, and they most likely got into the vent and activated the airlock pressurization protocol. You need to find another airlock to get inside. When I originally talked about Breathage, I discussed the game that I would recommend instead of Breathage, which was Subnautica, and I still say that Subnautica is, is the one that you should probably try playing if you haven't. Uh, I've talked plenty about it in the past, and even though I'm not into underwater games, so to speak, it really is impressive. It was impressive even when it was in early access, and I really should go back to it at some point. Uh, I just haven't in many, many years, but I'd suggest picking that up instead. I, I think a lot of these problems that Breathage has uh, with tonal inconsistency and the the movement of everything... And uh, even the inventory management, to some degree, is lessened because of how Subnautica is built. Even trying to get oxygen is a little bit easier, because you always know that the surface is there. If you can just get up to the surface, you will refill your oxygen. Uh, not just like these, these very small areas of the map that are specific to, to being oxygen-rich environments. Uh, yeah, Subnautica, it's... It's a good game for a reason. Thank you for joining us for yet another installment of Space Ember Revisiting Breathage, uh, which was a, a fun little experiment to do. And uh, I hope to do more revisitings of games that I pieced out on early to see if I can get further in them as time goes on. Uh, look forward to that next year. And uh, I'll try to link uh, the original audio one that I did a while back so that you can compare and contrast. But my my feelings on the game haven't really changed all that much. I just have more experience with it uh, than I did before. And uh, don't forget that uh, this cave is actually uh, a safe house itself, and it is just a void out there. So you might as well just stick around. You don't want to die out there of suffocation, right? So you might as well stay here. I mean, we've got tons of fun games. I think I got Jenga around here somewhere. We could play Jenga. Ooh, that sounds better than suffocating in space, right? Yeah. Where'd you go? Fine, choose suffocation. Be that way. <laughs>